we present stroke transfer, a method for example-based synthesis of animatable stroke styles. Given a 3D object, we ask an artist to draw an exemplar on the rendered image with brush strokes together with annotations for the stroke's orientations, length, and width. At the same time, the system computes features and canonical sections based on the geometry, lighting, and viewing conditions at each point on the surface of the 3D object. They are independent from the style of the strokes, but encode the instance intrinsic information. Canonical sections serve as a set of bases for representing orientations, and features a set of scalars encoding the local characteristics. We train the model to convert the features to a set of scalar weights, which serve as coefficients for the canonical sections. The linear combination provides the orientation field for placing strokes on the object surface. This model encodes the style-specific information. The model is trained to minimize the error between the produced orientations and the orientations specified in the exemplar. Our formulation allows us to use simple linear regression for the learning, and the resulting model offers an interpretable representation of brush strokes. With the model at hand, now given the new object, lighting, and viewing conditions, we can compute the object's instance intrinsic quantities and use the learned model to transfer the style onto this new setting. Now, we evaluate our method step by step. The state-of-the-art patch-based approach tends to produce patch orientation drift, causing temporal artifacts on stroke animation. Even with optimization for patch consistency, maintaining coherent orientation motions is difficult in the image space. Our method offers much better temporal stability while still retaining the expressive stroke styles. When we only use the view-dependent canonical sections for learning and transfer, the resulting orientations are stable but too boring. On the other hand, with only light and normal dependent canonical sections, the resulting orientations can become unstable when lighting conditions or normals vary significantly. The use of the combination of these canonical sections together leads to a stable yet lively motion in the orientations. Here, we did not apply smoothing for the vector fields. Next, we compare the effectiveness of vector field filtering. Without filtering, we see the center of a vortex wiggling around, and there are small vortices here and there. With spatial filtering only, we see small vortices disappear, but the center of the vortex still wiggles. With temporal filtering only, the center becomes stable, but the vortices are still there. With both filtering applied together, the center becomes stable and there are no small vortices. When applied to stroke drawing, we see a much stable animation when the spatial and temporal filtering is applied. If the anchor points are chosen randomly per frame, we see strong temporal flickering due to the shift in stroke positions and the change in drawing orders. With our coherent hierarchy of anchor points, we see much improved temporal coherency. With no random angular offset, the resulting drawing seems too ordered and unnatural. Random angular offsets allow the emulation of natural variations seen in hand-drawn styles of artists. We use our predicted color attributes from the nearest neighbor regression as undercode. Note there are still some gaps between the generated strokes. Instead of adding more levels of anchor points and strokes, we simply compose our strokes on top of the undercode. Next, we show examples created using our method. In the left, we are showing the exemplar and annotation collected from the artist and the texture of the brush strokes used to generate our result. We show the reference rendering in the middle and our result in the right. The first example is a Keenan's cow. 
we see that highlight and dark strokes are placed naturally following the reference rendering, and that orientations, length, and width follow the annotation. Color variation in our result is in general larger than that in the example because of the use of the nearest neighbor regression. But this large variation is our intention because it requires a highly trained expert to simultaneously produce the color variation and maintain a harmony. Smoother color variation could be produced using our method by using our linear regression instead. We see coherence in strokes between frames. It is hard for a human to create this sort of coherent animation with vivid and lively strokes. Next, we show the monkey example. Next, we show the head example. In this example, we are showing how the strokes are incrementally added to the drawing by starting from a white canvas and limiting the number of strokes added per frame. The undercoat is turned off at the beginning and turned on at a later frame. Next, we transfer the style drawn to the blobby to the fertility statue. While the blobby object is genus 0, the fertility statue is genus 4. Our transfer works for objects with different topology. Then, we create another result using a different style with a regular exemplar together with a transparency exemplar. We can then overlay the second style on top of the first style to get the superimposed result. Here is another example where our technique provides a new design method. We use an annotation that is independent of the exemplar. The specified orientations are completely different from how the exemplar was drawn. Well, we have used the annotation for the fraternity statue, and this example was in fact created by accident. Even so, the generated stroke drawing looks natural. In hindsight, our system seems to disentangle various artistic and geometric elements very well, and allows control of each element independently, providing rich design possibilities. This is an example of using partial exemplar, where we only collected the exemplar and annotations for the head region of the gargoyle. We use the style learned for the partial region to generate strokes for the entire region of the gargoyle. The two gargoyles, when placed side by side, have different styles. We can apply our method for a deforming object. The object starts in a spherical shape and gets stretched over time, resulting in the total surface area to vary as well. Our generation and propagation of anchor points enable coherent and expressive stroke styles even for such a dynamic object. Last, we apply our method to a scene from Sprite Fright. This scene consists of 18 objects, such as the hair, hairband, 
skin, scarf, clothes, and so on. Out of the 18 objects, we use only four examples, one for the hair, one for the skin, one for soft materials like the scarf and clothes, and one for hard materials like the buttons and earrings. When applying the examples and annotations of soft and hard materials commonly used for multiple objects, we are shifting the colors during rendering. We emphasize that the generated style look plausible even when the objects in the scene deform in a complex manner. Thank you.